Shankar, I am chairperson of this session, Dr. Chandra Shekhar. The motivational force behind him, Dr. Renika. Other dignitaries in the audience, and students from different colleges, doctors. I I am very proud to be a part of Chandra update and I hope we will have an everlasting relationship with this institution because the hospitality they have shown was tremendous and and I hope we will we'll continue the same so that we have relations forever. My topic today is to talk about the physiotherapy management of ankylosing spondylitis. Next slide please. So when we talk about ankylosing spondylitis, it is one of the major challenge to the whole rehabilitation team as a whole because we do not have a cure. So we have to, the, the patient is going to ha suffer from the disease throughout his life. So what we have to do is we have to give him lots of tips and we have to work on different areas so that he makes his, he, he can improve his quality of living. So as a physiotherapist, it is very important for all of us to have a very good assessment of a patient who comes to you with the diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis. So ankylosing spondylitis, we have different things to be assessed, but I'm, I'll briefly tell you what are the different areas of assessment because we are running short of time. Maybe we will be able to understand when we discuss on the management, what all aspects you will have to take a measurement. So we make a note of the postures, especially flattening of your cervical and lumbar lordosis. So we see for the thoracic kyphosis, we see for a decreased mobility, we see for weakness in muscles, we see for decreased chest expansion and many other things. Physiotherapy is a key component in the management of ankylosing spondylitis and the task of the physiotherapist is tremendous and he has to empower the patients. He has to give a clear picture about the, the disease because the patient has to really understand his problem. Then only he will be able to cooperate with you. So Dr. Sujit in the morning had made my job simple because he was talking about adherence. So it is very important for you to tell the nature of the disease so that patients will be able to adhere what you advise them. So it is very essential to explain them self-management principles because this is a disease which they are going to suffer for their life. So you have to tell them what they are supposed to do, what they are not supposed to do and how to how they can manage things themselves because it is not possible for them to be always with us. And you have to make them realize that exercise will surely improve their quality of living. So you have to motivate them and you have to gain the confidence that thereby they will be adherent for the advice what you give them. Next slide please. So what are the aims of physiotherapy management? The overall aims of physiotherapy management are to minimize deformity and disability and thereby improve well-being, normal function and ultimately the person's quality of life. These aims can be achieved by working on these areas that is you can reduce the pain, you can maintain and improve the posture, increase the mobility of spinal, costovertebral, peripheral joints, strengthening of anti-gravity muscles, stretching of the tight muscles, improving and maintaining cardiovascular fitness, improving the respiratory function by 
to prevent chest complications and imparting knowledge about the disease. Devising home program, teaching self-management principles and ergonomics, improving the psychological state and help, helping them to join a support group. So, the whole session, in the whole session we are going to discuss on all these areas, how we are going to help these patients so that they will be able to uh, cope up with the particular problem. Next slide please. So means and methods of treatment. So for the problem of pain, typically pain in the case of ankylosing spondylitis is aggravated by inactivity and is often reduced by exercise. So it is better so that whenever you teach some exercises to your patients, a, the pain reduces after the exercise. So this is an encouraging thing so that your patients will follow your instructions. Ultrasound therapy, acupuncture, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation and gentle spinal mobilization aid in pain relief. Cryotherapy helps in the acute stage and deep heating is effective when it becomes chronic. Steam bath, hot baths and showers preceding exercise controls pain and induces relaxation. Hydrotherapy relieves pain and muscle spasm. Acupuncture is also practiced to relieve pain in some patients. Next slide. The next area to work on is posture. So posture is a very important area because the patient is going to develop a flexed posture and it is going to be a progressive one. So what you have to do is you have to stop the progression and then you have to maintain the posture. So flexion or flexed postures should be discouraged in all positions, whether he is sitting or he is lying or is standing, whatever may be the position he chooses. So we discourage flexed or postures. Postural re-education in front of a mirror and through video presentations helps to improve posture. So you give a feedback to the patients so that they will be able to understand that they, they, what they have to become and what is normal so that they will be able to um, take up your advice and they will be able to follow your instructions. Patients can stand against a wall as straight as possible with chin tucked in and even walking tall. Walking tall means when you are in an extended uh, state, so you look tall. When you are in a flexed state, your height is lower. So it is again one simple thing what these patients can do at home is a height check uh, regularly. Because when your height keeps on decreasing, that means you are going for more and more flexed postures. That means you are developing flexion deformities or your range of motion is decreasing. So regular height check in your home is a simple tip which can tell you about the progress of the disease. This can be practiced with the patient. So you have to try to walk tall. So this aids you to maintain good posture. So repeated prone lying with hyper extension of the dorsal spine on forearm supports and hip hyper extension in prone aid to gain good posture. Isometrics of your shoulder are also very helpful. So the self-management principles which we are going to discuss in the later part of this session will surely help them because it is not going to be a posture is not going to be something which is to be maintained for an hour or uh, so it has to be maintained throughout so they have to be taught what is good what is bad how to maintain and what are the other factors which has to be concentrated so that they will be able to maintain a good posture next slide please the next problem of these patients is mobility flexion extension lateral flexion and rotation of cervical thoracic and lumbar spine may be limited Warm the joint by heat, massage or active and passive exercises before mobilization. Because whenever you are planning a mobilization, what we do is we try to warm the joint so that it is easy to, for you to mobilize and is also less painful. Mobilization of facial joints using maintenance procedures and repeated small range mobilization of spine is very effective. So especially when you work on the mobilization of the facial joints, that too on the a PA glide to the facial joints is very very helpful in these patients and has to be followed. Mobility exercises especially using a gymnastic bowl can be very effective because exercises 
are very boring because when you ask somebody to do like this for 10 times and you ask somebody to do like this for 20 times, it is really boring. So you have to introduce variety into your exercise so that every time you have to make some modifications, you have to introduce new exercises so that you maintain the interest of the patients so that they will be able to adhere and follow your instructions. Breathing exercises can improve costal and sternocostal uh, mobility. Singing in a choir or a playing in a wind instrument can be therapeutic and enjoyable. So it is not that uh, you always put it as a mandatory schedule to the patients that you have to do this and that. So it is always better you get the benefit of it by making, it, making them involved in something which is really interesting. So you put them in a choir or you, you ask them to play a wind instrument. These are some interesting things. So they will be able to do the thing, enjoy it and at the same time get the treatment also. Pool therapy is an excellent means to improve mobility and gives a feeling of fitness. So this is again very important thing. So we do, yeah, I think every one of us like to be in a pool. So pool therapy is very good because adherence is there and also we really enjoy. And the one important thing in pool therapy is your weight bearing is reduced, your jarring of your spine is reduced and you get the warmth of the water. So all this help in mobilization, so you do not weight bear, you do not jar the joints, but still you enjoy the whole program. It is not only used for mobility, it is also helpful for strengthening also. Helpful joint mobilization is also very important, swimming. Walking and cycling can help improve mobility. Supervised group exercise programs help maintain flexibility and posture. So it is always difficult to work alone. So you have to make a group. And when you do it in a group, it is not boring. And you will be able to do it better. And you will be able to follow what from your partner or the one who is working with you so that you can get a motivation what he is able to do you will also try to do so it is always better so sacroiliac joint mobilization should be incorporated and assistive devices can be used in case of severe deformities to improve ambulation and mobility because we do not encourage assistive devices uh, for a moderate person or a mild case because he will become dependent on that and that will ultimately reduce his mobility in the joints. So un until and unless it is a very severe case and deformed case where he has to go and depend on an um, assistive device, we do not prescribe assistive devices earlier. Next slide please. So when we talk about the next problem that is strength of these patients, strengthening of anti-gravity muscles and abdominals is essential to maintain erect posture. So you have to strengthen these groups of muscles. Specific muscle groups which need strengthening include cervical, thoracic and lumbar extensors, gluteus, lumbar side flexors, thoracic rotators, neck retractors, shoulder elevators, shoulder extensors, abdominals, hip extensors, hip abductors, hip rotators and quadriceps. So you have to work on, so it is not always a case that you you find weakness in all these muscle groups so each and every person differs so the presentation also differs so you have to check for all these things and if there is any weakness in these muscles you have to work on them so hydrotherapy and gymnasium can be effectively used to achieve strength so you can work either on a water based uh, exercise or you can work on, on a land based thing so that you can improve the strength. The whole exercise schedule should have a warm up and a cool down session before and after. So any session, any, any prescription you follow, so you should have a warm up and you also ha should have a cool down. So the warm up period again differs the, depending upon the climate, surrounding, all that. So sometimes if you are in a, uh, in a uh, chill climate, you have to do more uh, you have to spend more time for your warm up. So exercises should be also be planned to improve coordination. So they also can have some problems with coordination. So you have to also work on coordination for these people. Next slide. So the next problem is tightness in the muscles. So la lack of flexibility in certain muscles. So how are we going to uh, uh, manage this? Tightness is commonly seen in sternocleidomastoid, trapezius, trunk rotators, shoulder rectus, flexors, 
pectorals, abdominals, hip flexors, adductors, hamstrings and gastronomies. So a static stretching, so especially slow and prolonged stretch maintained for 30 to 60 seconds is of great help. So you have to go for a slow and sustained stretch, a prolonged stretch for 30 to 60 seconds. A contract relax method is very useful. Here what we do is we do a maximal isometric contraction for 3 seconds in the position of maximal stretch and then it is followed by relaxation for 2 seconds and followed by another passive stretch for 6 seconds. So here we utilize the a relaxation period thereby you will be able to give a better stretch the next time so this is a contract relax method which is very much uh, uh, helpful in these patients so that you can improve their flexibility trunk and leg stretches are particularly effective in a hydrotherapy pool owing to the warmth and the effect of buoyancy and floats provide a firm and passive stretch so when especially if you are working in a in a pool therapy i told you that because of the warmth so you will be able to do a better stretch and also your buoyancy and also your floats will provide a firm stretch so it is better to do it in a hydrotherapy setup next slide cardiovascular fitness because these people become inactive automatically their cardiovascular fitness also goes down so they find it difficult to do each and every day activity so they become lazy they do not involve themselves in activities so they become isolated and they don't become uh, they don't they don't involve in things okay so uh, they think that god has cursed me like this so they try to be aloof so actually these people's cardiovascular fitness is one area which has to be worked out so, so that they will be able to shine in a better form. Cardiovascular fitness improves stamina and enables to pursue work and hobbies with great ease. O rowing machines, static bike, swimming, acrobics, cycling and walking can be utilized to improve your cardiovascular fitness. Contact sports and high impact sports are avoided to prevent fall or injury. So we do not encourage them to go for uh, contact sports or uh, high impact sports because the chances of a uh, fall or injury or for an, uh, developing a fracture are all there, we do not advise them. Cardiovascular exercises can be done in a gym or in a field or in a hydrotherapy pool. It can be done three to four times a week. It aids in mobilizing the thoracic joints. It improves and maintains chest expansion and vital capacity. It reduces your body weight, reduces the risk of heart diseases and diabetes. It improves sleep, relaxation, and ultimately your well-being. Next slide. <coughs> the respiratory function. So these patients surely have a decreased chest expansion and vital capacity so and it has to be managed by different types of physiotherapeutic procedures like localized thoracic breathing without back support, diaphragmatic breathing exercises, incentive spirometry, thoracic expansion exercises, mobilization of the thoracic spine and mobilization of the shoulders and also the ribs. So it is not possible for in a half, half, half an hour lecture to explain in detail about how to do all these procedures. So anyhow, I'll, I'll just give you a brief outline of what can be done for these patients. So sitting with the lumbar flexion facilitates calnear breathing and sitting with the lumbar extension facilitates diaphragmatic breathing. So you have to work on these areas and you especially we would encourage a yeah, a extended posture when you go for these uh, breathing exercises. Swimming is a good exercise and especially a breast stroke helps to improve chest mobility and expansion. Because chest expansion is a common problem, breast stroke is one of these styles so which is helpful in improving your chest expansion. Smoking is to be avoided to prevent chest complications. So sm smoking, we know it does bad in every other area, almost to the, all the systems of our body. So here again, these patients, ankylosing spondylitis patients, already they have, uh, they are prone to chest complications. They have a decreased chest expansion. So it is not advised for them to go for smoking. Here I am reminded of one joke related to smoking. So one one patient went to a doctor 
and he told him that sir i used to take a, uh, a pack of cigarettes every day so he just wanted to justify himself he asked the doctor sir can you tell me any one good thing about smoking so that i can be satisfied for myself that i am doing it for that particular good so the doctor was thinking for a, for a long time and then finally he told him that smokers always look young so this this person was uh, very much surprised and then he said anyhow i will meet you after 15 days because i will go and observe okay i will go and observe all the smokers how do they look then i will come and see you so this fellow went outside and then met many of the smokers and then found that everybody was very young and he was very much surprised how these people all these people are very young so then after 15 days he came to the doctor and asked him sir uh, i was very astonished to see all these people are very young all these smokers are very young so he was very curious to know how what is the mechanism by which smoking makes people young so the doctor said uh, smokers do not become old because they die early <laughs> so smoking is very bad uh, so the next one is yoga would be of help to gain relaxation and it also improves your respiratory function next slide so this is the area where i wanted to stress the most and dr sujith has made it very very simple for me so patient education is very important part of therapy so you have to teach him about the nature of the disease so what is the problem he is suffering we have to tell him it is a progressive disease so he has to cope up with the disease and he has to work throughout and he has to follow all these instructions then only he will be able to improve so and it should start immediately after the diagnosis you should once the diagnosis is over then you should start this patient education he should understand the whole scenario of the whole disease and your exercise complaints can be gained with less difficulty if you do that consistency of exercise are to be stressed than the quantity so it is no point in giving more and more exercises so teaching them asking them to do a lot of exercises at, the, at home consistency is very important so he has to continuously do this for his lifetime so you have to insist on consistency than on the quantity of exercises and they should understand that exercise and staying active surely improve their quality of living and also reduce the symptoms so a video demonstrations of your your patients whom you have already treated and the clinical presentation of their improvement will all help in this regard next slide so tips to live with ankylosing spondylitis so for example you get a patient with ankylosing spondylitis so as professionals it is not only our job to do treat uh, it at our outpatient department or just to treat, the, uh, treat them in the inpatient department so what they have to do at home what they have to follow at home that is what is very very important so how do how to live with ankylosing spondylitis so you stop slouching or stooping whether standing sitting or lying so this is a gold standard and so this has to be followed as a mandatory thing you should not slouch in any position use a chair with a good lumbar support with arms and head support from seat and upright from back low and soft seating should not should be avoided because low and soft uh, seating will encourage more of flexion so you move stand and stretch the spine frequently you do not stick on to a, a, a particular posture for a long time do not sit for a long time do not lie for a long time because you are you are you will freeze in that particular thing and it is your mobility is getting reduced so you have to move stand and stretch frequently bed should be firm and uh, need not be hard one thin pillow or no pillow is recommended in supine lying abdominal and back exercises help to maintain good posture stretching and range of motion exercises improve flexibility and preserve good posture next slide do not sit or lie still for long periods avoid car seats or back supports because we do not encourage car seats or back supports because they will weaken your muscles 
because the support has to come from your surrounding muscles and not from the corset. So if you start using a corset or a back support, so the work of the muscle is now taken up by the corset, so the muscle still uh, remains inactive and it is not working. So you have to motivate the particular person to strengthen his muscles so that he will get the natural support which has to be given to him. A small cushion behind the back or under the buttocks helps to maintain good posture while driving. Try to sleep on your stomach without a pillow under your head. Keep your legs straight rather than, uh, so it is a mingle, okay? Keep your legs straight when you are sleeping, okay? So do not go for a curled position. Provision of correct chairs and workstations are essential for workplace comfort. Next slide. So especially why we are stressing more on this chairs and seats is because most of us need a sedentary type of life. Most of us go to the office, sit from morning till evening in the same chair, okay, see some files, do some work with the laptop, okay, eat in the same place and come back in the evening. So this is the nature of job for most of us. So sedentary type of lifestyle is there so when you are in that particular posture you have to invest on these chairs which can put you in a proper posture hips and knees should be at right angles and the feet should be supported and the forearm should be supported on arm rest while sitting altering the height of the computer screen and the chair can make a significant difference so you have to work and you have to especially on these patients you have to work in such a way so this is coming under the ergonomics point of view where what is comfortable is not the one encouraged so certain postures may be comfortable I may be comfortable in one position so I prefer that posture for a long time somebody else will be comfortable in some other posture so he he uh, is in that posture for a long time so it is not what is comfortable for you but what is good should be taken into account so how you are supposed to sit okay you have to take it up so you the patient has to be encouraged to sit in that posture and not in his own comfortable posture warming up spine with a shower or bath in the morning along with few stretches can relieve morning pain and warm beds also help in relieving pain next slide cold pack on inflamed areas help in pain reduction wearing supportive shock absorbing shoes can decrease the jarring and reduce pain aggravation proteins vitamins and calciums are important for bone health avoid becoming overweight as carrying too much extra weight puts additional strain on the spine every pound of weight translates into eight pounds of pressure in the joint so you, you cannot be obese because if you are putting on additional weight it is going to load your joints more and the possibilities for degeneration is high your balanced diet is very much essential Smoking can lead to lung infarctions, breathlessness and worsen the sufferer who already has a decreased lung capacity. So alcohol should not be taken and if taken to be taken in moderation and utmost care is necessary if the patient is on medication. Long drives should include stops for stretching. You can install extra wide mirrors if neck movement is limited. So for example if the patient has to take take a reverse in a car if he has got a limited rotation of your cervical spine it is difficult so you they can install extra wide mirrors so that it is possible always wear a seat belt with a shoulder harness and have the headrest adjusted to support your neck aerobic exercises and sports are encouraged as they get the lungs working swimming advised you earlier to move stiff painful areas in water and it does not jar the spine 15 to 20 minutes of lying flat on the stomach or on the back with the legs dangling towards the floor in a day provides rest to the spine. Next slide. These are all the tips which you can tell your patients so that they can utilize them and they can improve their uh, quality of living. Pregnancy is usually not a problem and in extreme cases cesarean section is advised. 
Not so anti-inflammatory drugs are not recommended during the first three months and the last month and during breastfeeding. Exercises and hydrotherapy can help for pain relief in these patients. Your basic exercise sheet can be devised, which includes simple and practicable exercises, which takes care of all the aspects of the disease. So you, ha you, ha you have to have an exercise sheet. So you should have some exercises for mobility, some exercises for strengthening, some exercises for cardiovascular fitness, some exercises for improving your chest expansion. So your exercise sheet should include all the areas and it should cover all the problems and it should address all the problems. So you have to device it in such a way that for how, many min uh, how, how much time you are going to spend for improving your mobility, how much time you are going to spend for strengthening, how much time you are going to spend for cardiovascular fitness. Likewise, you have to work out an exercise she sheet and you can, it has to be practicable, that is very, very important. So, so if you, it is not that you prescribe more exercises, that means that you are a good physiotherapist. It is, you should tell them what is practicable. So, so if something which is not practicable, if you teach them, it is not going to be of any use. Exercise can be integrated to daily activities and an exercise video or audio cassette can help as a memory aid. Because what happens is, when you teach them some exercises, they go and practice these exercises, some of them forget. So you teach them five exercises, when they go home, they know only three. After two days, they know only one. So likewise, there is a possibility for them to forget the procedures, how it has to be done, all that. So that if you give them a, uh, an audio cassette or if you give them a video demonstration of the exercise in a CD format, so they can put it in their house and they can clarify for themselves so what they have to do so that it is not, so patients do not come back and uh, ask you, sir, I, I have forgot the exercise because it also helps in the non-adherence. So, we, 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 it would be very better to give them a thing in an exercise protocol in a CD format so that they will be able to follow it at home. Simple checks like finger to floor. For example, if you talk about the finger to floor, it is a combination of your spinal mobility and your hip mobility. So, if you can check the, how much he can reach. That is, a, you can go for the finger floor, finger to floor test. So, if the range is decreasing, that means if the if the disease is progressing, so that he will we will not be able to reach more. That means his spinal mobility and his hip mobility is coming down. These are all simple checks what he can do at home. It, there is no need for a professional or a physiotherapist to be there. So he can check for himself whether he is improving or he is maintaining the, the posture or whether he is progressing towards the bad. So you can also have a posture check. For example, a simple thing what can be done is um, if the patient has got a flexion deformity of your cervical spine, so what we do is the distance between the tragus of the ear and if you, the, if you ask the patient to stand against a wall and the distance between the tragus of the ear and the wall measures the amount of flexion deformity. So this is what we do, we practice in, in our setup. So what we can do is, for example, if the patient stands against a wall, close to a wall and if he can put one small book in, in the place that is in between the wall and his head, he should know that as days go by, maybe every weekly once he can take a test whether he is able to put this, the same book or whether he is able to book a, put a bigger big book in the same place. If he is able to accommodate a bigger book in that place, that means he is more going towards a flexion deformity. That means the mobility is coming down and he is more progressing towards the cervical flexion. So as I told you, height check can also be a tool which can be checked. So you can regularly have a height check so that which will tell you that you whether you are going towards flexion. Next. Regular brisk walking, cycling and racket sports are advised. So contact sports and high impact sports are avoided. Good insoles to footwear avoid jarring and, pain and provide pain relief. Begin your exercises slowly and plan to do them when you are least tired or you have least pain. So to gain the complaints 
to gain the complaints so you have to advise them so it is not that they have to have a fixed schedule they have to work in the morning even though you whatever amount of pain you have whatever amount of tiredness you have but you have to stick on to the rule so it is not the way so you have to teach them and tell them that they can do these type of exercises and when they feel comfortable that is they are least tired and least pain when they have the least pain good sexual relationship is achievable by good communication between the partners and modification of postures next slide the very important part of the total rehabilitation program is psychological support so these uh, ankylosing spondylitis patients they become depressed so motivation from friends relative and family members should always be there so that even they can join with them for the exercises so that they will be able to incorporate it for a longer time and it will chase depression and the feeling of isolation exercises can be practiced in any convenient time and it has to be partnered with people who cope up with the similar disease for example you have one more friend who is also suffering from the same disease so then you can make a partner with him and you can you can be a partner of him and then you can work with him so that you have a group so you have more motivation and it will improve your mental status and also the quality of life and your total status of your problem it is better to join the spondylitis association to know the reason updates to gain motivation so you can uh, join the association so that you can know what has happened to the people who are sufferers like you all over the world how they have improved and what uh, what is their point of view which had helped them to improve or overcome a particular problem and if you have the same problem so you you can also try the same thing and you know that there are a lot of people trying and living happily with the same problem so you you should you can also learn to live with the ankylosing spondylitis next slide thank you